Hey guys, welcome to a very exciting game of the Garry Kasparov saga. This game was played between Deep Blue and Garry Kasparov in the 1996 famous tournament of uh, Garry Kasparov uh, playing against a supercomputer or a computer. It wasn't really called a supercomputer back then. But this is game 2 and the first game was won by Deep Blue where uh, Garry Kasparov made a slight mistake and the Deep Blue uh, uh, team immediately capitalized on it and they won a wonderful game which shocked Gary because he believed that uh, nobody can defeat, none of the computers can defeat him. Back then the computers were not really developed so it was a wake up call for Gary. Nonetheless this is game 2 and another thing that I wanted to let you guys know is uh, in yesterday's video or the previous few videos I have realized and some one of you have uh, told me actually that the audio was a little bit uh, echoish or there were some issues in it. So I have uh, corrected that and hopefully there are no more issues. So let's get into the game. It's a pretty long game and a pretty technical game with not many uh, blunders. Let's get into it. Knight to f3. This was the first move made by Gary Kasparov who has the white pieces and Deep Blue has the black pieces. This is the ready opening and d5. We have d4 and now e6. Now this is the queen's pawn opening, the Zuckertrot variation. We have g3 and now c5. The idea of g3 is simply to fianc to the bishop on this wonderful diagonal. Bishop to g2 as planned and now knight to c6. We have castles by white and knight to f6. Now c4 and this is the king's Indian attack where you have a wonderful uh, bishop and after d takes c4 this is now a Catalan opening and this wonderful bishop is the Catalan bishop on this nice uh, nice h1 to a8 diagonal this diagonal. So we have knight to e5 immediately jumping in with the knight and now bishop to d7 not really capturing because then you're gonna get pawn captures and you can even exchange off your queens it's heading towards a draw so we have knight to a3 and now c takes d4 immediately relieving uh, <coughs> relieving this uh, d pawn of its duties and just why not it's an extra pawn so why not just grab it it's not being defended but this is not a, not a mistake or anything even though white is two pieces down two pawns down he can definitely recover those we have knight a takes c4 so one of the pawn is recovered already and now this this blacks uh, this d pawn the d4 pawn is pretty forward in the game and you definitely have to push this pawn forward to defend it then you have to push uh, this f pawn forward to defend uh, the e pawn so you're going to definitely get a, get a wonderful structure of a wonderful pawn chain of these four pawns and that's that's what happens in the future but you will see we have bishop to c5 developing move now queen to b3 and finally black can castle so he castles on the king side or the deep blue castles it's not a he it's a computer we have queen takes b7 since the pawn was hanging white decided to simply capture it and you don't really gain anything by putting your rook here on um, on this b8 square you're definitely going to kick away the queen queen is going to this square then it can uh, run away pretty easily and you cannot even recapture this this b2 pawn because the bishop is nicely defending the pawn so we have knight takes e5 first we have knight takes e5 and now rook to b8. You don't really want this queen to be hanging around in your uh, in your seventh rank. So white just simply decides to get black decides to get uh, rid of this white's queen from its territory, and you can either move it back, you can move move it back to this uh, a6 square and then bring it back as well. You cannot really capture because this bishop is nicely protecting the a7 square. We have queen to f3 and now bishop to d6 attacking this uh, this knight but interestingly not really defending the, the this light square bishop 
because most of the times you need this light square bishop to uh, to attack this uh, <coughs> or counter this light square bishop that white has the catalan bishop so that's a pretty interesting move by deep blue now we have knight to c6 and this forks the queen and the rook and forces the capture of um, of this knight here by the bishop so bishop takes c6 queen takes c6 so queen again has entered uh, the black's territory and now e5 but it's completely fine position there is no harm as such we have rook to b1 and now rook to b6 yes for now this pawn is not really defended but how are you going to attack this pawn? You have to put your uh, queen here. Then you can even go back with your uh, rook. Or you can put your queen on this, uh, this b file. It's completely fine. And then the rook will come to c file. It will attack this entire c file. Uh, completely fine position. It's a drawish position. We have queen to a4. And now queen to b8. Bishop to g5. And bishop to e7. Since the... Uh, this knight was attacked you want to put your bishop behind it you don't really want to ruin the pawn structure b4 now getting this uh, moving this <coughs> pawn forward and asking black to capture because once you capture this pawn then you can capture this knight here distract this bishop and now you can easily double up the pawns on the f5 we have bishop takes b4, bishop takes f6, g takes f6 and queen to d7. Again, the queen has entered black's territory and it has occupied the 7th rank. We have queen to c8, queen takes a7 and bishop uh, rook to b8. There was a pretty interesting move that could have been played. Rook to a6, which also would have been fine. Instead of playing the rook here, you just put the rook here on a6. And you attack the queen. Now you force the trade of queens. We have queen to b7. Queen takes b7. Bishop takes b7. And rook to b6. Attacking your bishop. Also defending uh, the dark square bishop. Bishop to, bishop to e4. And this is completely equal position. Which is what deep blue should have played. But instead, after queen takes a7, rook to b8 was played. Not really something uh, that even a human would consider playing in this position because this allows the queen to escape by queen to a4. Now the queen is nicely controlling this, uh, this diagonal. Also, it's attacking this bishop and it can enter into, the, into this position anytime it wants. So... That's why this is a slight advantage for white. We have bishop to c3, now defending the bishop, and rook takes b8. Queen takes b8, bishop to e4. We have queen to, e, queen to c7, and queen to a6. King to g7, queen to d3, and rook to b8. A lot of uh, maneuvering is going on. Because now both the players want both the non, just one player and the opponent is a computer I keep forgetting. So the computer also wants to try to get some advantage going. But here again bishop takes h7 is played and uh, white captures yet another pawn. But he also allows this rook to come into the b file. So rook to b2. Now bishop to e4 and rook takes a2. So the comp the compensation here was uh, you give up the a pawn for the h pawn yes you could have definitely defended this uh, a pawn by pushing it forward but there is no real point because you can attack it with the rook you can attack it with the with the queen and you can't really defend uh, the the single pawn from all the threats <coughs> so it's better to give up that pawn for the wonderful h pawn because now you have four connected pawns and black has three connected pawns and a, a single lonely pawn here on the seventh rank on the f-file we have h4 and now queen to c8 queen to f3 rook to a1 rook takes a1 bishop takes a1 and queen to h5 now you will see a lot of maneuvering 
because both players uh, or rather yes both players aren't really able to find uh, the correct winning combination or that's how this game has to be played you have to take it slow and you have to keep uh, keep pushing for something to happen you know this is uh, this is simple and plain and simple the queen wants to go to h7 give a check push the king away try to attack this backward pawn and try to capture it so we'll see how he does it we have queen to h8 offering a trade of queens but of course uh, gary is not interested because he has the upper hand in this position we have queen to g4 with check and now king to f8 simply getting out of check now we have queen to c8 check king to g7 queen to g4 check king to f8 and here if gary wanted he could have repeated the moves back and forth and this would have been a draw by perpetual but that did not happen as he was going to push for a win he definitely knew that this is a winning position so he decided to play bishop to d5 and attack this backward pawn we have king to e7 <clears throat> and it's better to attack this pawn because it's on a light square and you have a dark square bishop so it's uh, you cannot use this uh, dark square bishop for defense of this uh, this pawn that is on light square and always remember guys if you are in a, an opposite uh, colored bishop ending then the uh, the player that is attacking or the bishop that is on the attack is the better better bishop and the reason for this is simply because you are going to avoid all the uh, all the other squares and you are definitely going to uh, going to get some advantage out of this so we have bishop to c6 now king to f8 and bishop to d5 again queen to e7 here again Kasparov could have if he wanted to get a perpetual by repeating these moves but he instead plays queen to f3 he finds a different way to attack to get to this uh, to get to the idea of attacking this pawn we have bishop to c3 and bishop to c4 now he wants to put the queen in this position and attack this pawn we get queen to c8 and now uh, simply directly attacking the bishop queen to d5 queen to e6 defending this pawn and asking for um, for uh, for a trade off of the queens which would be a completely uh, a slight advantage for white but not enough to to win a game especially against a computer so we have queen to b5 declining the trade and now queen to d7 queen to c5 check queen to d6 queen to a7 check queen to d7 queen to a8 now queen to c7 black the only thing black wants to do is to either attack this bishop and ask uh, ask white to defend it or just to put the queen in between the king and the opposite queen that is uh, the white's queen and try to get these queens off the board we have queen to a3 check queen to d6 queen to a2 and now f5 finally um, the queen is behind this bishop and now you can definitely capture this pawn which is exactly what Kasparov does. Bishop takes f7 and now e4. Bishop to h5 and now queen to f6. Queen to a3 with a check. King to d7. Queen to a7 check. King to d8. Queen to b8 check. King to d7. And now bishop to e8 with a check. King to e7. Bishop to b5. Bishop to d2. And these are all um, simple maneuvers because Gary isn't really uh, able to find the correct combination of moves. But this is again, like I said, you are playing against a supercomputer. It's not that the computer is going to make a mistake and you are going to win the game easily. Usually, that's what hum that's what human players do, and that's how they lose the games. <clears throat> but that's not going to happen with computers, so you have to be very patient. We have queen to c7 check, now king to f8, bishop to c4 and bishop to c3, king to g2, now bishop to e1 attacking this pawn but again this king is nicely defending it so 
it's just really want uh, it's, it's waiting move waiting for Gary Kasparov to either uh, either offer a draw or get a draw by perpetual we have king to f1 attacking the bishop and now bishop to c3 again going back f4 finally advancing the pawn e takes f3 with ampassant and now e takes f3 bishop to d2 f4 king to e8 queen to c8 with a check king to e7 queen to c5 with a check and this is where it gets really interesting king to d8 bishop to d3 and now you are attacking the second pawn this is exactly how Kasparov uh, even after 15-16 moves of uh, what looks like there is nothing is happening he has eliminated one of the pawns from this e file and now also attacking the pawn on the f file again because it's on a light square you can attack the pawn and um, black cannot really defend because this this bishop is literally useless now we have bishop to e3 you have to play something and now queen takes f5 asking do you want to trade the queens now because this is come if that uh, if the queen trade is accepted then this is completely winning for white and deep blue could have just resigned immediately but that did not happen and we have queen to c6 queen to f8 with a check king to c7 queen to e7 with a check king to c8 and this is where gary kasparov devises a plan to get rid of this queen and this is how he does it bishop to f5 with a check king to b8 queen to d8 with a check cornering the king king to b7 and now queen to d7 with a check finally you give a check you attack this queen and now black has to forcefully capture it so you get queen takes d7 bishop takes d7 and now uh, king to king to c7 and finally you get you bring the bishop back bishop to b5 and this was the final position on the board as uh, deep blue realized there was nothing uh, deep blue can do <clears throat> these three connected pawns against a pawn and a uh, bishop is not enough compensation and if you guys are wondering what happens next then i'm going to show it to you we have king to g king to d8 and whatever you play white is just going to simply put the bishop here on d3 not allow this pawn to ever move and simply push these pawns to victory i can show it to you bishop to d2 h5 king to e6 king to e2 now attacking the bishop bishop to e3 king to f3 king to f7 h6 king to g8 g4 bishop to d2 g5 bishop to b4 king to g4 bishop to e7 f5 bishop to d6 f6 and you're not even cared about attacking this pawn because this pawn is not going anywhere king to f7 h7 king to e6 and finally you bring a queen into the game now you have king to d7 f7 king to c7 f8 with a queen into the game bishop takes f8 queen takes f8 king to c6 queen to c8 with a check king to d5 now you march forward this pawn g6 king to d6 g7 king to d5 g8 with a queen with a check and uh, king to d6 now queen g to e6 and this is checkmate this is exactly what deep blue saw so the operator resigned the game on move 73 in this position and gary kasparov equaled um, in the in the game of six now the scores are one each and uh, this was a pretty amazing game shows you how amazing player gary really was because uh, you need you need some tough skills and a lot of patience to win against a supercomputer especially with all these small maneuvering moves but anyways that's it from this uh, this game i know it was a pretty long video so thank you for watching and i would like to thank all my subscribers as well for subscribing to the channel i greatly appreciate it hopefully the video is fixed that's all from today
Namaste. See you next time.